Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is a pleasure to be with you today, whether you're watching this Sunday morning or any other day in the week. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you in. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Dustin Pruitt, and I am just stoked to continue on in this Knowing God series, these seven I Am statements that Jesus gave in the book of John. And here we are in week four, where we're talking about Jesus giving the statement that I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And I, if you can't tell, I'm immediately jumping in here. No more preamble. We're going we're gonna to get right into it. Uh, but I want to give a little bit of context really quickly. In, in this John chapter 10, where Jesus says this, the, this statement, I am the good shepherd, he's speaking to the Pharisees of the time. These are the, the, the Hebrew religious leaders. Um, and the, the imagery of a shepherd is it, it, it's so common in the Hebrew faith. This is language that the people have heard for centuries about shepherding. And so when Jesus says that I am the good shepherd, he's evoking historical context as well as what's going on in the, in the present tense for them. So why don't we really kind of dive right in and I want to take it back old school to this this concept that they kind of have in going into Psalm chapter 23 that uh, David is writing about the God, about the God, about God saying in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. And I, this is David really underlying the, the, the peace, the security that a good shepherd can bring to his sheep, the, this leading by quiet waters, green pastures, my soul is refreshed. These are sheep being well taken care of. Uh, in, in Ezekiel 34, let's look at the other side of this, of what a bad shepherd is like. And this is God saying to the people in Ezekiel 34, verses 2 through 4, it says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. Now, maybe for you sitting at home, I know for me sitting right here in my home, uh, I'm not all about chewing curd, but... That, that was seen as a, a luxury good. That, that's the good stuff, eating the curd. So he's, you're, you're holding on to all the good stuff. You're supposed to be the shepherds taking care of the flocks. What are you doing only taking care of yourself? What shepherd only tends to themselves? And so here we are in John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This declaration is a fulfillment of all this Old Testament stuff about God being a shepherd and what a good shepherd is. But it's at the same time, he's bringing that Ezekiel 34, that rebuke to the Pharisees, the Pharisees of the time of, guys, you're missing the mark. You may call yourselves shepherds. You may wear the mantle. You got the clothes. You look the part, but you're not acting the part. You're worrying about yourself. And the, the Pharisees, these leaders of the Hebrew religion at the time, were supposed to be the shepherds of the people, showing them, teaching them God's word, the history of God intervening time and time again in behalf of the, the Hebrew people. And yet they're missing the mark. They're worrying about themselves too much. But God is a good shepherd. Jesus in his own words, is a good shepherd. And I think good shepherds, there's a couple things that make a good shepherd. And I think number one, a good shepherd protects his people. That Jesus, his role being our shepherd is as a protector. In John chapter 10, verse 28 through 29, he says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. That these verses are an assurance of Christ's eternal security. 
That he's got us. He's got our back. Now, when I we think about Christ, we think about a, a father figure, a shepherd can be a father of his flock, tending and caring as a father would for his own children. And he, I think about as a little kid, uh, I wasn't one for nightmares, but I, I mentioned before, my little brother uh, would freak out a lot and he'd have nightmares and dad would come in and he'd soothe him. He's like, hey, it's okay. You may think there's monsters underneath the bed. I got you. There's no way those monsters are going to get you when I right here. Now, same thing for us, maybe for the adults today here in the room, here in your room, wherever you are listening to this, watching this. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the, the bank, the bill collector, the manager, whoever could be out to get you, that Jesus has got you. That he's there to protect you. That nobody, the, the Bible goes on to say that, that no weapon formed shall prosper. To go back to nothing will snatch us out of the Father's hand. That it's not temporary, but it's eternal. Jesus ensures it. That he is a good shepherd where the enemy will come in and seeks to deceive, to kill, to destroy, that Jesus is the good shepherd, that he stands vigilant against this, always on the lookout. Second thing that I think a good shepherd does is provides. Uh, I, I spoke a few weeks ago, I think three weeks ago now, talking about the name Jehovah Jireh, which... Uh, and a quick translation means Lord the provider, but in a deep translation means the Lord will see to it. Well, Jesus is a good shepherd who provides. Those green pastures, those still waters, that rest and refreshing, the shepherd provides that for his flock, just as Jesus does for us. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus declares, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and life to the full. Jesus is highlighting the fullness. You're not just going to get a sliver. You're not just getting a little bitty slice. You're going to feel good for five minutes if you pray, if you, if you kneel on this, if you happen to cry, then you'll feel good. You'll feel a little bit of life. Jesus will sprinkle that little bit of blessing dust on you. Jesus is saying, it's not that. I'm coming to give you all of it, every bit of it, life, and have it to the full. That it encompasses everything, our physical well-being as well as our spiritual well-being. Physically, he ensures that we are there to survive. I can think time and time again where God has intervened in, in moments where I've, I've totaled my car and I walked away with not even a bruise. I can think of moments where uh, I just, I, my parents are visiting and I just told this story, funny enough, about how money just appeared in my bank account one time that I deposited my, my I, I received actual checks from my job and I deposited it and it showed up twice. And the bank said the money didn't come from anywhere. My employer said the money didn't come from it. The money just showed up that God provided for my physical well-being, but also spiritually, and this is even more important, more profound, that he provides things, the living water, the, the bread that he talked about before. In, in John chapter 6, verse 35, he said that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That God is a provider. And it's not just what you can get by to live on, it's an abundance. Time and time again, God and Jesus shows himself to go above and beyond the call. That a good shepherd cares for his sheep and wants them to flourish. And I think the third thing that I think a, a, a good shepherd does, and obviously Jesus does this, is that he's present. 
I, I speak to you today as a, a survivor, a harsh word, a survivor of a, of a divorce. Uh, my parents divorced when I was six. And from then on, my biological dad was the weekend warrior um, where he would get me every other weekend and then he'd get me four weeks in the summer and then every other Christmas uh, I'd spend with him, then my parents, my mom the next year, then my dad the next year, then my mom the next And even when I was with my dad, he would pick me up on Fridays, me and my sister, and we'd go to the local pub and he'd give me a handful of quarters to go play the like slot machines <laughs> and arcade games while he'd go to the bar and he'd grab a beer. And that was like my relationship with my dad for years. And so a father, somebody who is present is insurmountably valuable to me. And I hope, and I think it is for everybody, whether we realize it or internalize it or not, presence is valuable. In, in John 10 verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep will know me. This emphasizes intimacy. This, intim this emphasizes that he knows us. The Bible says knows every hair on our head. Knows our thoughts, knows our worries, our tensions, our joys, our dreams. But just as much that we will know him. That he will be so present in our life, we'll recognize his voice. We'll know his heart, his desires. That the presence of God, the presence of Jesus is constant and reassuring. In Psalm 23, uh, it gives a great depiction of this. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. These are, these are common shepherding tools that we know the, 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 the classical shepherd's crook, but the, the rod there as a weapon to, to defend, but they comfort us. That the assurance that the shepherd's presence will be there to comfort and defend. And John chapter 10, verse four, it says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. That the sheep, his people will know his voice. That Jesus isn't, didn't die 2,000 years ago and he peaced out never to be seen or heard from again. And we got the Bible and it's all well and good, but that's all we got. But thankfully, that's not the world we live in. God speaks to us each and every day. God's speaking to you, God's speaking to me. I think the problem is more often than not, are we listening? Have we wandered off like many sheep might do? Have we wandered off listening to something else? Like, oh, that, that's pulling my attention. When God is speaking to us constantly, that the sheep will know his voice. And once again, Jesus is giving this contrast of being a good shepherd to that Ezekiel 34 of a bad shepherd only caring about themselves. That Jesus came to relieve the burdens of the people, not to, to take from the people to take the curd, to take the good stuff. He came to take the burdens and the hurt, to defend rather than devour. That he came to seek the lost and not seek fortune. And I think the what that means for us today, the church today, as followers of Christ, as members of the church, his bride, that we are called to embody the, the characteristics of a good shepherd to protect, to provide, and to, to be present with people. That's so important that people want to know that they're looked after and that they're not left hanging, that they're not going to be out on their own, but to be there for us. And but maybe you're sitting there in your seat today and you feel like you need some protection. You feel like you need some provision, you need some presence. I come to tell you, 
Jesus is there with you. Speaking to you. No, and you could cheat. To, to get the benefits of a shepherd, shepherd, you got to hang around. You got to stick around. You, the thing about sheep and shepherd, sheep doesn't always know which way the shepherd's leading us, but we got to trust that he's leading us to green pastures, to still water, which is safe water, not a rushing river that's going to sweep us away, but still water that will refresh our soul. And so let's take a moment and let's meditate on Christ being the good shepherd. And if you need any one of those three, protection, provision, presence, or you need all three or a combination, let's seek the Father right now. Let's seek the good shepherd right now so we may know him, know his voice, Know his heart just as he does ours. So why don't we pray? Father, we thank you endlessly, endlessly for who you are. The good shepherd, the gate, the light, the bread, God, you are there for us in every way. You could easily be sitting on your throne in heaven a million miles away. But that's not your heart. That you are with us. Every second of every day, calling our name, loving and caring. Jesus, and we thank you for that love. We thank you for that attention, for all that you are. Then all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please stick around for, for our next week as we're continuing on in this knowing God to to really know God's heart. We're, we're trying to know God's heart, know his voice, who he really is, and not things that we've heard, not just what I'm saying, please go in, read the Bible, seek God yourself. Don't just take this and run with it. But let's really get to know God and his heart. Uh, I've said this before, don't let... What I've said, go in one ear, out the other. Let it bang around in your head. Let it echo in your heart. Let it drive you to seek God more. Because he, he's a good shepherd. He's worth following. He's worth knowing. He's worth seeking. And until then, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.